What's up guys, Ben here from Authentech, and this is my quick camera comparison test of that new-ish iPhone 11 Pro, and this is last year's iPhone XS. This is video on the front-facing selfie camera on each phone. How does the quality and dynamic range look and compare? Now, one of the big upgrades Apple made on the 11 Pro is that we can record 4K 30 or 4K 60 on that front-facing camera. So right now we're on 4K 30 and we're stuck at the max 1080p on last year's 10s. How does the resolution and sharpness compare? How does the stabilization and field of view compare? Looks like it's a wider angle on the new 11 Pro. This is a quick walking stabilization test. And a little bit of a jog for some wobbles. So while we're here with a waterfall going on in the background, this is an audio test on the iPhone 11 Pro. And this is audio on the iPhone XS. How does the audio sound and compare? Let's live authentic. How does the audio sound and compare? Let's live authentic. Now switching to the rear facing cameras. One of the big updates on the 11 Pro is this ultra wide angle. I find myself using that ultra wide angle just about every single day. There's many scenarios when I'm in a tight space and I can't back up far enough to squeeze everything into frame or those times that it's a beautiful landscape or tall building and that ultra wide angle creates this awesome immersive effect. Back to the primary lens on each. At 4K 30, the footage of this waterfall and the background tree look pretty similar. One small thing I notice is the water looks a little bit more blue on the 10s. This is a little bit of a walk-in stabilization test. Both of them actually look pretty stable and doing a fair job of smoothing out the walking wobbles. But then when I jog, we start to see more of the differences and the improved stabilization on the 11 Pro. Now it's not major, but I'd say it's a small step forward. This was a quick 4K 30 test shot, and I'm honestly so impressed overall with the 4K footage that this phone can produce. Whether you love or hate Apple, most people will have to admit that this tiny sensor and lens can produce some really gorgeous overall results with brilliant colors and contrast, beautiful dynamic range, smooth stabilization, sharp focus, and crisp clarity. The side-by-sides are quite interesting, and there's a lot of similarities, even here with the digital zoom and handheld stabilization. The primary lenses are very similar. So really, again, a lot of it comes down to that ultra wide angle lens on the 11 Pro. It's a fun and creative camera tool that a lot of photographers and people might find useful. But then again, it's an expensive phone and I'd understand if a lot of people don't think it's worth the upgrade. Let me know if you think it's worth it down in the comments. This is my pented autofocus speed test. Which one seems to have the better, faster, more consistent autofocus. I'd say for autofocus speed and accuracy, the 11 Pro is beating out the old 10s. It's not only slower, but it's more inconsistent. Quick slow motion sample and no major improvement here. We're still stuck at that 1080p 240 FPS cap on each, and just looking at quality and dynamic range, it looks almost the exact same. Now I'm disappointed and really wish they had 480 or 960 FPS like many other phones already offer. Now I do appreciate that we can record the same 240 FPS slow-mo on that new ultra wide lens on the 11 Pro. And this can be helpful when getting close to those action shots. It's a little soft, but a good option to have. Both of these cameras are looking fairly similar in low light as well. Same saturation and grain, pretty similar dynamic range and contrast as well. When compared to the new 11 Pro's ultra wide, well, its lens looks a little softer with more noise and low light. Now switching to photos and starting with just a couple front facing camera shots. I really like that wider angle field of view that we get on the new 11 Pro. This is perfect for those group shots or helping to tell the story of where you're at and your surroundings. 
As for sharpness and clarity, they're pretty similar. In harsh lighting conditions, the 11 Pro has improved HDR processing, so that's nice to see. As for background blur and edge detection and portrait mode, they both look pretty similar, at least in these samples. And I really just wish Apple made our skin look less orange as they've been doing this for too long now. For the rear facing cameras, remember we have that triple camera setup on the 11 Pro, but only dual lenses on the 10s. The latest addition is that ultra wide lens and these are fun to see a direct comparison side by side and just how much more wider field of view that new lens has compared to the 10s's wide angle lens. The 11 Pro's ultra wide is overall very sharp, especially in photos, and it consists of great dynamic range, nice colors and white balance, it's even sharpness and clarity looks pretty awesome. As for its primary and photo lens, they look pretty similar between the two. The colors or white balance might just be a tad different, but usually pretty close. And only when we do a little pixel peeping, 400% zoom in, can we see just a tiny but nice improvement of clarity and sharpness on the 11 Pro over the 10s. This photo of the duck was really interesting. Just look as we zoom in on the improved dynamic range on the bright white feathers of the 11 Pro, and the 10s doesn't look terrible, but it's clipping just a tad of those highlights. Even here as I stand close to this sign, it's very tiny but the text and color grain on the 11 Pro is a tad sharper which I like to see. In the classic flower shot, the white balance looks more accurate on the 11 Pro plus its sharpness is a tad bit better. And of course we can't forget some low light and new night mode shots on the 11 Pro and this is a new area the 11 Pro can really beat out the 10s. Funny enough, in medium to lowish light, the 10s still does a good job overall. But when the light gets really low and dark, well that new long exposure on the 11 Pro, it's really nice and fun to have. So here's a thought, if at any time throughout these ultra wide angle shots you're thinking, wow, that would be really awesome to have in my pocket with me at all times, well then maybe it's worth the upgrade for you. For me personally, I use that ultra wide almost every day. For others out there, you're thinking, well that's not worth the upgrade, just a single wide angle lens, well then that's awesome. You can save your money and feel good by not upgrading. There's sometimes a stigma when a new phone releases people can think well that's a tiny upgrade no one can actually tell the camera differences. Well thankfully when we place these shots right up next to each other we can see more easily those exact differences and improvements. Sometimes they're small but sometimes major. Thanks so much for watching guys and until next time let's live authentic.